Greetings, 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 royal family. Come on and come on and get this. Come on and come on and get this. All oh, these housewives. I am late. I know that I am. But thanks for clicking on the video anyway. Part one of this reunion was bananas. And if you've been following the channel, thanks by the way. You should recall me saying that I think the reunion is going to be corny and we've seen all that we will see with these online beefs with these ladies back and forth. Boy, was I proven wrong, which I hoped. First of all, I don't even know where to begin, okay? I had to watch this like one full time, then another time in increments. I've had like discussions with people about this. I was too busy talking about the reunion instead of jumping on here and recording a video but i am back from my little mini vacation so i'm sure most of you have seen the reunion by now and man oh man drama 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 okay first let's talk about the looks okay miss lanithia leaks ooh, 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 ooh. nini had the cannons out right she, I don't even know where to start, y'all. Okay, Nene had her cannons out for everybody to see. Okay, Nene, Cambodian breast milk leaks look like she was prepared to breastfeed Andy's baby. Okay, um, Cynthia, hands down for me, was best dressed. Um, I liked her look the most. I did see her dress in its entirety. She looked great. Candy, she looked nice, you know. Um, a lot of people were criticizing her hair, but I think she looked nice. She did a good job on her makeup. She said she did her makeup herself. Uh, Portia, hair and makeup was fab. I didn't like the outfit in its entirety. I mean, all of the ladies look beautiful. You know, I'm just kind of nitpicking. Kenya's um, makeup and hair was good, was, was flawed. Like, she looked good. She looked very good, and I do like that she was smiling a lot throughout the episode. Um, Eva... I didn't, her, she looked nice, didn't care for her outfit whatsoever. However, Eva wins face hands down. From the neck up, she was doing her thing. Hair looked great. Face, impeccable. Those earrings, she wore those earrings. Those earrings did not wear her. Uh, who did I miss? That's it from the main cast, right? But yeah, as far as the uh, outfits, I like Cynthia's ensemble for you know the best but eva did win face award okay eva the diva all right so andy got it started with the whole nini and uh cynthia mess the flashback to the alter egos of the ladies uh what is nini nene nini 50 cent and cynthia I, who the heck is 50 cent anyway kenya versus ken and candy was labeled salt bay salt bay let me say this. Production was great. The transitions between the ladies, uh, that was seamless. Um, I was nervous and I was wondering, like, how is this going to work? But they did a couple of test runs um, and the, everything looked good. Seamless transitions between Andy. Andy had the ability to mute some of the ladies. Great, great, great. Production looked great. Uh, the sound and lighting for each lady was good, except for Cynthia. Her sound was a little bit janky. And then Tanya's lighting was off. Marlo's lighting was off. But whatever. Overall, production-wise, I thought that they did a good job, right? It's Bravo. So we expected, you know, perfection. So as far as Kenya's concerned, right, they flashed the scenes of her issues throughout her marriage, right? And Kenya, she says that she and Mark are in counseling and they're working on the relationship. And she says that Mark did a complete 360, so basically, he's right back where he started. <laughs> a 360, Ken? You mean a 180? Did you mean to say a 180? Or was that a Freudian slip? He really did a 360. Anywho, Andy and his shady self, he asked if they are doing virtual therapy, being that Mark is in New York, Kenya's in, uh, in Atlanta, and everyone is supposed to be quarantining and social distancing. Now, Kenya replies, yeah, yeah, they have Zoom therapy and Zoom is like a video conference app, basically like a FaceTime for computers. And I caught that. I said, Andy tried to catch Kenya slipping. Um, I don't, I don't, you, here's the thing with Kenya. Oh 
Oh, boy. And I know I'm going to get it in the comments. It is what it is. Y'all know how I feel about Kenya throughout the season. Anywho, the problem with Kenya is she she made she's a liar. She's lied. And I don't know about any of you, but if you lie to me, even if you are telling the truth, I am not going to believe you. I don't I don't make it a habit of believing liars. So do I think that Mark and Kenya are in counseling? No, I don't. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. So let's move on to some of the viewer questions, right? One of the viewer questions was, um, how would Kenya feel if Tanya brought one of Mark's exes who, like the ex that um, Kenya said that Mark was texting, like how would she feel, Kenya that is, if Tanya brought that girl before Kenya the same way Kenya brought the cookie lady to Tanya? Kenya replies, I never said that he was entertaining cheating on me. I'm like, what? She could never answer the question directly, right? Didn't Kenya say that Mark was texting another woman? And I said this in my review of that particular episode that Kenya was lying to make Mark seem like a horrible man. Was Mark texting another woman? Probably. Did I believe Kenya right then and there? Mm, no. So I'm wondering if she forgot the lie that she told, right? And she also said, remember, she said she called the woman that Mark was texting and told her that she knows where she lives and leave my husband alone. Can you buy? She, uh, she didn't even answer the question. Now, Andy goes into saying that he was so sad seeing Kenya be treated poorly by Mark. And Kenya, she starts crying about fighting for, for family. And she says that, Andy says, you know, he, he pegs her as this strong woman. Kenya said something that I thought was interesting. She says that if it's a stranger, she'll like, she won't like, she'll, she'll attack them. Like, you know, she'll go with her war of words and she'll throw her shade. But if it's someone that she loves, she'll give them chance after chance and she'll fight for that individual. She won't be so quick to walk away. Something along those lines, right? Which I find interesting. And there were some people I've seen, you know, reviews and I've talking to some of the squad and they shared their opinions about that. They said that that doesn't make sense. That's stupid. But we have to remember Kenya is a woman who has been abandoned by her mother. Right. And she obviously has abandonment issues. So it makes sense that someone who has been abandoned by her mother would want to hold on to someone who she feels that she's close to or she's in love with out of fear of being abandoned. You understand what I'm saying? So I get the criticism that some people were giving her like, girl, please, you know, you need to move on from Mark. But Kenya always wanted to be married and be a mother. And she wanted to build her own family to try to compensate for what she didn't really get growing up. So from that standpoint, that makes sense. It sounds stupid to people. And who knows if Kenya's telling the truth? I, we don't know again, but just a little bit of psychoanalysis or whatever. So that, that makes sense, even if it's a lie. You get what I'm saying? Anyway, another viewer question for Kenya was asking about um, her marriage and reference how she treated Kim Fields, Phaedra, Kim, and Portia. Kenya's reply is, you would have to ask them what they said about me. Again, she takes no accountability for anything that she does. And I find it interesting that people say that Nini doesn't take any accountability when Nini was asked certain questions throughout the, um, the reunion. And <laughs> Nini said, sure did. That is correct. You know, Nini leaned into the camera. So I get it. Some people don't think that Nini takes accountability for certain things. That may be true, right, from their viewpoint. But Kenya will never answer a question. She did not answer a question directly as it pertains to her relationship with, with Mark, you know? And that could be because Mark probably told her, look, don't go up there divulging any of our personal information, Ken. Ran it in, Ken. So Portia, she speaks up, okay? Portia never said anything uh, about Kenya, for Kenya to attack her and her ex-husband, right? They start talking about how Portia's like, oh, you know, you talked about my marriage. You know, you talked about my ex-husband. Yeah, well, everybody was talking about your ex-husband, but I get it. I get it. Uh, Kenya did make some strong allegations 
about uh, Portia's relationship as well as Cordell, which is Portia's ex-husband. Um, Kenya, she never admitted that she was wrong, you know? And again, she, this girl, she just does not take accountability, you know? And out of nowhere, <laughs> Nene, I mean, not Nene, Andy asked Nene what she thought. And I'm just like, why, why is he asking Nene what she thinks? Like, Nene has nothing to do with this per se, right? But I guess Andy was getting a little bit bored, so... So he, <laughs> I just don't understand why he asked Nene what she thought, but whatever. But Nene answered the question. She said that Kenya's marriage is a result of her own karma. Candy, then she chimes in saying that she doesn't think that this is karma, right? And this is in reference to, to Kenya. She doesn't think that this is karma. And she says that it was due to their relationship being long distance. So at this point we see Candy coming out of nowhere, sticking up for her girl Kenya. So she's just like, you know, I think it, it, the, the long distance relationship and, you know, uh, baby Brooklyn was a beautiful thing that came out of their relationship. Yeah. Okay. Candy girl. If you, if you say so, if you say so. So Nene, she addresses Kenya, not using, <laughs> Oh man. About this whole thing about, uh, Kenya not using her own, her own eggs. Right here's the thing this is when Eva says that is so disgusting I cannot believe that she said that that was so disgusting first first of all um first of all Eva you relax let me tell you what annoyed me I'm all over the place because this was a lot y'all this was a lot I'm trying to stick to the notes just bear with me let me tell you, I'm jumping ahead, but let me tell you one thing that got on my nerves with this reunion with these women, all of them. This is off limits. That is off limits. This is off limits. That is off limits. All of this is hypocrisy. When you guys are arguing with each other and someone throws a dart and you throw a bigger dart back and then somebody will start crying. Oh, that's supposed to be off limits. No, when you're ticked off at someone and you're angry, and you lacking like good judgment, you can't expect somebody to not quote unquote cross the line when they're ticked off, embarrassed, they feel attacked, they're on the defense. You can't expect that, even though people would like to think that you, you know, you shouldn't cross the line. When you're angry, anything goes. I'm not making an excuse for, for um, some of their behavior, but let's keep it real. When you are, think about a time when you're pissed off. You're not even really thinking at that, at that moment. Most people, some people are not. Some people have self-control. Some people, when they've had enough and they're pissed off and they're getting at somebody, somebody's embarrassing them and they got to, you know, fight back and, and defend themselves. Do you think that the angry person is going to stop and say, hmm, let me calculate. Wait, wait, I shouldn't say this. I not everybody does that. So this whole, oh, this is off limits. Kids are off limits, but everybody talk about each other's kids. Oh, you can't say, you can't say this about someone's physical features, but then you turn around and call each other the B word. It, that doesn't make any sense to me. Anywho. So Eva was disgusted that, you know, um, Nini said this about Kenya. Nene said that she heard it and it doesn't matter where she heard it. Cause Andy was trying to ask her, you know, where you heard it from. So it doesn't matter where I heard it. And she, she says, I don't regret saying it. Now look, when they asked Nene, if she said this, or if she said that throughout this reunion, Nene admitted, yes, I said that. And I don't regret it. Kenya throughout this segment, Kenya's not really saying anything. She's just sitting there smiling. And then again, Eva, she jumps in and she, <laughs> Nene says, this ain't your fight. Then the reads between Nene and Eva begin. Nene said that Eva was broke when she came to Atlanta. The last time she was on top was when she was on top model. Nene tells Eva to respect her elders. And then Andy ends up muting them. Then Kenya says, this is why people accuse Nene of being bipolar. No, 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 Miss Kenya, honey. You're the one running with that narrative, but okay. 
Kenya, she ends up shading Nene by saying, we know her kids are her kids because they look exactly like her. And even she's cheering Kenya on and hyping everything up. And I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. When did Eva and Kenya become buddy, buddy? Like Kenya said, we know that Nene's kids are her kids because they look just like her. No one else said anything. And then Eva's like, uh, uh, like a cheerleader. All Nene said was that Brooklyn looks like Mark, right? Could it have been shady? Probably because it's Nene, it's going to automatically be looked at as shady. But how is that shade? She does look like Mark. That, but Nene was saying, baby Brooklyn looks like Mark because Kenya didn't use her eggs. Not baby Brooklyn looks like Mark because Mark is ugly. You see what I'm saying? Totally different from what Eva said in reference to uh, Portia's daughter. Anyway, Kenya says that Nene looks like a white woman in drag. <laughs> these women are these women are ridiculous. What's off limits here? <laughs> Listen to what she's saying. <clears throat> Kenya, you better be careful because that statement may come back and bite you in your behind. Because you. The, they might accuse you of being drag phobic. I, you know, every day is something new. I just don't understand at this point why Eva is co-signing everything Kenya is saying. She was really like her cheerleader. And I was very confused. Then Eva accuses Nene of having multiple foreclosures and talking about Nene's finances. Uh, what? When? Miss Eva got a little piece of house. And don't know how to act. Like, this was all crazy. This was so crazy. Let me just pause and say this. Miss Nene, you have been on a campaign saying that you were ready to read all these ladies. And you coming for all of them. So even if they are double and triple teaming you, I feel like bring your A game, Nene. This is what you wanted, right? And I, I think Nene entertains me. She is absolutely entertaining. And... Bring it. You know what I mean? Just bring it. So who's up next? Lord, Portia, and Eva, girl. They end up going at it. Portia says Eva's, <laughs> you know, I, I don't do the whole making fun of people's physical appearance in a nasty way, you know, but Portia says that Eva's breasts are social distancing. Lord have mercy. Now, but they're real though, Portia. And I like Portia. They're real. You know, we body, women are body shamed when they have plastic surgery. Uh, and then they're body shamed when they don't have plastic surgery. So you see what I'm saying? Nothing is off limits with these ladies. So that's why I didn't understand when they were talking about crossing the line and crossing the line. You all cross the line. But Portia, her, her breasts are real. I mean, the joke was funny, right? But for Portia because that that's did she write that down because that was real that was real witty <clears throat> but yeah in all seriousness though she's a mother she's breastfeeding these are not excuses but she has her natural breasts so you know I don't know it's just the hypocrisy with all of them with all of them anywho Kenya's marriage so Kenya she shows her marriage certificate Cynthia confronts Nene. Uh, okay, let's talk about this marriage certificate, y'all. Because <laughs> do you think the marriage certificate, not license, it was a marriage certificate, quote unquote. Do you think that marriage certificate was authentic? Also, I, I for some reason, I kept saying throughout the season, Kenya probably is really married. But because it is getting a lot of attention and it's got her name circulating in the press and it, and it gives her press, she's not going to admit, yes, I am, or prove everybody wrong, not just yet, because she wants to get that, you know, that clout. But when I saw that, I didn't even pause the TV to look. There were other people taking uh, pictures of it, uh, enlarging it, dissecting it. I even asked questions um, of people that I knew who had their ceremony outside the country, but got married in their respective state. But again, she didn't show us a marriage license. She showed us a marriage certificate. Some people say it was an application for a certificate. 
What do you guys think? I will leave it at that. So we move on to Cynthia confronting Nini about her saying that her relationship with Mike was fake or her she's had fake relationships. Now I was a little confused here because I was too busy laughing. Um, did she say, not Mike, what was the guy's name? Will. I think Nini was accusing Cynthia's relationship with Will of being fake. Or some crap like that. I don't know. Let me know, y'all. I told you, this was, I should have did this right as soon as I finished watching. But I'm glad you're here. Make sure you hit the like button. I'm just talking to y'all like I'm on the phone. Anyway. Nene, she gets fed up and she closes her computer. <laughs> I laugh at the most ridiculous things, right? When she closed her computer, yo, let me tell you something, y'all. I was laughing so hard. It was like, it's not even that, some people like, it's not even that funny. But what was so funny is Cynthia was like, I don't, I don't see Nene. <laughs> All you see was the computer key, the keys on the laptop. <laughs> Nene, come back. Come back, Nene. <laughs> she was not feeling everything being directed at her. Um, that was funny. Like I, I like that was really funny to me when she closed that computer. You know what else I thought, that what I noticed? Eva's memory was on point, was it not? She was able to recall just about everything as it pertained to everyone else, right? That That's selective amnesia. It, like, went away, right? Eva was able to recall everything. Because, you know, she don't remember. You know what I mean? She was, she her memory came back. <laughs> Cynthia said, I don't see Nene anymore. <laughs> I laughed so hard and I was like, is she serious? She better be coming back. And I'm like, uh-uh, Nene. When she closed that computer, I was like, you better come back. All you saw were the keys on the left. <laughs> okay, let me get it together. Kenya starts throwing her shade. Kenya says, come back, Nene. You know you need those checks, girl. You was only on however many episodes. <laughs> and Kenya said, I don't know. What did she say to, say to Nene? I feel like I'm watching an episode of White Chicks or something like that, talking about. <laughs> These women are terrible. They are absolutely terrible. So, you know, after the break, Tanya and Marlo, they join. So we see, <laughs> we see Nene slowly opening up the computer. <laughs> I was just laughing. Yo, this was a cluster blank of foolishness. And I was so, in, I was like, I was so entertained. Anyway, so Tanya and Marlo, they joined. So you see Nene opening up the, the laptop and she is back. She said she had to use the bathroom. She said she, she had to change her tampon. <laughs> then they move on to Miss Candy. Here we go. They show... Um, they showed like a, a montage of Eva caught in all her lies. Eva gets called out by the uh, some of the viewers' questions. And then Portia starts reading Eva. Nene is getting her life laughing. <laughs> She's laughing at Portia going off. Nene's like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this was a circus, a straight up circus. Then, just as I predicted, I if you go back, you will see, I predicted that they were going to get at Portia for that nappy-headed comment. First and foremost, she says, first and foremost, I'm a black woman and no one can tell me how to speak about my culture. This is what... Eva said in defense um, when they brought up her saying the nappy headed comment, right? <sighs> God, I knew, I knew they were going to get on her about that. I knew they were going to get on her about that. Um, I found it very interesting that no one else said anything besides Kenya. I really found that interesting, but we all know if uh, Nini said something like that, Please, everybody would have jumped on her. Anywho, Kenya, she tries to get Eva to understand that she should be sensitive when it comes to making comments like that. And I can appreciate that. 
You know, she started out with, oh, you know, you're as gorgeous as you are. You're light skin. Eva is not light skin, but whatever. Eva, Eva is a lighter shade than Kenya. So I get it why Kenya would say she's light skin. Kenya said that Eva being light skin, having light eyes and quote unquote straight hair in comparison to a woman like herself, who is darker with more textured hair, uh, how they would feel. I, I'm going to give Kenya A for effort. Nice try. I will give her an A for effort for trying to let Eva know something that she already knows. Eva knows this. She didn't care. And she said what she said. Bottom line, she, that she it's not right. I don't, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. Eva knows exactly what the heck she was doing. You understand? She knew exactly what the heck she was saying. But I do, even if it was fake, I do applaud Kenya for attempting to school Eva. But... Eva knows this already. Oh, my God. Good job, Kenya. I do have an issue with the narrative that she, um, that Kenya was perpetuating, but I can tell that she was choosing her words carefully as she was talking to Eva. So it it, it is what it is. It's, I, I, that's a whole nother topic. Anyway, back to Nini. So Nini on her spiritual journey, you know, trying to fix her broken relationships with the ladies and the viewer question, they did ask about Wendy Williams. Here we go. You see, this, I don't know if Wendy said anything, but this is exactly why um, Wendy Williams didn't want to be quote unquote associated with the show because now her name is coming up. But then again, Wendy, you could use the press. So like, knock it off, Wendy. Nini said that she's in a neutral place with Wendy and Kenya feels that Wendy and Nini are not real friends. Kenya said that Wendy said something degrading, said some degrading things to Nini. Tanya said she did not think it was that deep. And here comes Miss Candy Burris Tucker, right? With her opinion. Candy says that Nini is strategic with her friendships she also said that Nini is benefiting from being friends with Wendy. And if anyone else said those things about Nini, referencing what Wendy said about Nini when she said that Nini is an over there girl, yada, yada, Nini would be ready to pop off. Nini says that she is not going to discuss Wendy, her and Wendy's friendship amongst these girls. And I'm saying to myself, why would Candy care? about Nini's friendship with Wendy. Wendy is not on the show. Wendy is not a friend of the show. Y'all not getting paid to talk about Wendy, per se. Wendy ain't getting paid to talk. She not getting a Bravo check. And e let me, even if Nini's friendship with Wendy is strategic, so, Candy, don't you have strategic friendships as well? Why would you be mad about that? But it was an opportunity for Candy to, I guess, give her opinion and throw darts at at um, at Nini. I get it. Charlemagne has told when uh, Nini countless times that Wendy is not her friend. I think that Nini knows that because um, Wendy was the one that reached out to Nini to kind of mend fences, quote unquote, right? I and when Wendy was going through her divorce, she reached out to Nini. And I feel like Wendy is using Nini. And I also think that Nini is, if she's smart, using Wendy. You know, you keep your friends close and your enemies closer. That's what they say, right? And uh, oh, word on the street, according to Charlemagne, he insinuated that Wendy's ex-husband was the reason why Nini didn't get her talk show. So I think that there is a mutual benefit there. Because when Wendy says things like, oh, you know, Nini's an over there girl and she says her little, she makes her little snotty remarks about Nini, it keeps Wendy's name trending, right? Wendy's losing a little bit of steam, just a little bit, you know, especially in comparison to her radio days. And I think Nini is very smart by not trashing Wendy publicly. I don't think that she should. I don't think that she should quote unquote shade or read Wendy down. Mm-mm. I don't think she should do it. So somebody is obviously in Nini's ear, letting her know, you know, just tread lightly. Charlemagne keeps telling her, you know, Wendy is not your friend. And she doesn't say anything negative publicly about Wendy. 
let's see where Nini is going with this. So then we move on to Portia having what seems to be the receipt of the century. So Candy, I want to know why Candy is so mad that Portia and Nini made up. And here's what I think. I think that there wasn't a, this to me, to me, to me, you can disagree respectfully in the comments, but to me, it does seem like there was a sort of secret alliance, not secret, but uh, alliance between Candy, Cynthia, Kenya, and Portia to get at Nini. They were all going to gang up on Nini. You know, they said that Nini's apologies were not authentic and she was on, Kenya said she was on an apology tour because she had no other friends. I think it was Kenya that said that. Friends on the show. Mm, that's very well possible. But why can't Nini apologize? This is what I don't get to. You say somebody is screwed up, they're messed up or whatever. Do you want them to stay screwed up so that you can keep, so you can keep talking about them? Because it's like when they apologize and try to right their wrongs, it's fake, it's phony, uh, we don't want it. But if they don't apologize, see, they never own up to what they do. What do y'all want? Besides good TV, which they've been, which they, they gave us with this reunion. But Candy, I think Candy is salty because Portia jumped ship on the agreement because Candy was very much pissed off at the fact that Portia and Nini made up. She made fun of the fact that Portia was crying and ah, my life was so hard without you. You know, Candy brought up the fact that she, that Nini dogged Portia while she was pregnant, yada, yada. Portia said, yeah, she did. You understand what I'm saying? I said some messed up stuff about her. And Nini said, yeah, I said some messed up stuff about her too. But, you know, now we're in a good place. I think that they are scared now because of all of the things that they agreed to do to Nini might just come out because of Portia. And when did Candy get all, regain all of this love for Portia? She couldn't stand her two seasons ago. Last season, it was like, eh, because of what happened with, you know, Phaedra. So, I don't know. Maybe it reopened a, a old wound. But I, I thought that that was real, real interesting that Candy was getting real upset about this, quote, unquote, fake friendship. Interesting. So, I have to say... Round one, the winner for round one. I don't know. But those receipts. Now, let me tell you something, Portia. Portia said that she had text messages in her phone proving that Kenya was talking about, um, that Kenya was talking about Cynthia. And Kenya said, oh, you know, I'm not really Cynthia's friend or whatever the heck she said. If you are lying, Portia, you're going to be canceled. And I, and I like Portia, but you're going to be canceled. You can't, you can't hype us up for all of that because a lot of us saw that coming. Now, when she said she had that receipt, Andy's like, send it to me, send it to me. Send it to me via text, forward it to me. And Portia's like, I'm going to send it to you right now. Kenya didn't say anything. Kenya was just sitting there smiling. And then Cynthia all of a sudden became hard of hearing, said, wait a minute, you... So there is a text message of me, a text message of Kenya saying that she is not my friend or whatever the heck the text message said. <sighs> well, if those receipts are authentic, I will have to say Team Twirl and Candy Factory and 51 Cent. Y'all need to have a team meeting. <laughs> Y'all need to have a team meeting or a team huddle. Portia hit the game winning shot with that text message receipt. You know, exposing that Kenya was never really Cynthia's friend, even though a lot of us suspected that. Like I said, if those receipts are valid, then Portia hit the game winning shot. So I would have to say round one goes to Portia. I have to say round one just because of that text message and the fact that she 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 had Nini's back, which I liked. And I knew that uh, Portia and Nini were going to make up. Because it seemed like they had a good time together, you know, when they were friends. And um, Candy Factory, Team Twirl, seems a little mad that Portia jumped ship, you know. And let's, okay, let me say this. This is all coming to me. Portia was sticking up for Nene as it pertains to, you know, Eva and Kenya and stuff. But let's not forget that Portia 
grew tired of Kenya's foolishness, especially when it came to Tanya. You guys don't remember how she was not feeling the fact that Kenya brought Cookie Lady to Tanya because Portia wasn't there. Tanya and Portia are cool. So she's not only sticking up for Nini, she's also sticking up for Tanya. Also, when who had a who had a oh at the Bailey Q or something like that. Kenya gifted um Portia a doll. This was a doll that Eva had given to Kenya. And Kenya tried to be funny and re-gifted it or whatever. And Portia was like, uh-uh, I don't want to get in the middle of that. I don't want to have, have to have anything to do with that. There was static between Eva and, and Kenya. Now you see Eva being Kenya's cheerleader. So y'all need to have a team huddle. <laughs> y'all need to regroup. I can't even get into all of the other shady things that it was a lot going on and I want more. So if episode two or part two of this is going to be just as messy, then I'm here for it. Um, it was good. It was really, really good. So like I said, I think, I think that Portia and the viewers questions, the viewers who came with some of those questions were really good questions. I'm glad that Andy pulled those. So Cynthia ain't have nothing to say. So we shall see if in uh, part two, she has um, something to say. I don't even, how long has this been? It's like 35 minutes. I'm sorry that I was late with this review. Y'all sorry that I was all over the place, but there were, it's a lot. It's a lot. Next time I'm not having a conversation with anybody after watching this because it was too much going on. I'm just going to jump right on and record. So if I left anything out, be sure to put it down in the comments respectfully. If I misspoke, I have no problem with correction. Do it respectfully. And you don't have to agree with anything that I said. I'm taking it back to the old school, but you can disagree respectfully. So if you enjoyed the commentary, hit the thumbs up button before you leave. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you click the notification bell, select all so you don't miss any of my up loads get down in the comments i can't wait to read your comments all right royal family i'm signing off i'll be back soon until next time peace